Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's another example of how to find the forces, the moments, and the reactionary forces on a situation like this. Notice we have a beam that's angled between the floor and the wall. It's making contact on the floor with a wheel, it's making contact on the wall with a wheel, and it's held in place by a cable. This is a short cable connection. There are two forces, each of 100 pounds, acting on the beam vertically, Notice four inches away from one end over here in a horizontal direction, four inches from the other end again in the horizontal direction. So, how do we find the tension on the cable and the reactionary force at A and the reactionary force at C? Now, the direction of those two reactionary forces are pretty straightforward. Since this is a, a wheel, we know that the reactionary force must be perpendicular, so let's call this F at A and let's call this F at C. So you know that those two forces must be perpendicular. Also realize that the tension in the cable has to be in this direction. So that's the tension. And that means there will be an x component to the tension, t sub x. And there will be a y component to the tension, t sub y. Now, the cable is connected to the beam at a certain height. How high above the ground right here? Well, notice at the end here that's 10 inches. And notice that the distance from there to there, this is 6 inches, this is 14 inches, so this is 6 divided by 20 or 3 tenths the distance from there to there. That means it must be 3 tenths the distance from there to there. Therefore, that must be 3 inches on that side. So this is a, a distance of 3 inches to where the cable is connected. Okay, how do we find T sub X and T sub Y? Well, let's say that this angle right here, let's call that angle theta. So let's find the sine and the cosine of that angle. The sine of the angle theta, by definition, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Now, the opposite side would be 3 inches, and the hypotenuse would be, well, we can find out with the Pythagorean theorem. It would be 14 inches squared plus 3 inches squared. Take the square root of that, so it's 14 squared uh, plus 3 squared, which is plus 9, divided by, no, take the square root of that, would be 14.3 for the hypotenuse. So that is the... The sine of theta will be the ratio of 3 divided by 14.3. The cosine of theta would be equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent side would be 14 inches, and the hypotenuse would be 14.3. So we'll use those two ratios to represent the sine and the cosine of the two angles. All right. Uh, knowing that, let's go ahead and calculate that out. So 3 divided by 14.3 is 0 0.210. That would be 0 0.210, and this ratio, 14 divided by 14.3, would be 0 0.979. 0 0.979. All right, that will make it a little bit easier. Okay, so how do we go about finding all those forces? So notice we have unknowns, T sub Y, T sub X, F sub C, and F sub A. Then we have the two known forces right there. Okay, so let's do it like this. Let's say we have the sum of all the forces in the x direction that must add up to zero, and the sum of all the forces in the y direction must, must add up to zero. So let's start with the x direction. So in the x direction, we have one t sub x to the right, so it would be t sub x minus f sub c. And of course, t sub x can be written as t times the cosine of the angle theta, so this would be equal to t times the cosine of the angle theta minus f sub c, and the cosine of theta is, of course, 0 0.979. So that would be 0 0.979 times the tension minus f sub c. Notice there are two unknowns in that equation, both the tension and f sub c. They, of course, don't, they're not equal to each other. Then next, we have the sum of the forces in the y direction. So we have 200-pound forces in the negative uh, y direction that would be minus 200 pounds. Then we have a minus t sub y, so minus t sub y, and then we have a positive f sub a, so plus f sub a. So t sub y can be written as t in the y direction, that would be t times the sine of theta, so that would be 200 pounds, that would be minus 200 pounds, minus 200 minus t sub y, which would be t, times the sine of theta, plus f sub a, which finally is equal to minus 200, 
minus the sine of theta is 0 0.21, 0 0.210 times t, and then plus f sub a. Notice in this equation we have two unknowns as well, but the unknown t also appears in the first equation, but the unknown, unknown f sub a does not appear. So we have a total of three unknowns, t, f sub a, and f sub c, which means we need a third equation. So what would be a good third equation? Hmm, well, we're going to find the moments acting about a particular point. Let's see, let's pick the point right here. That might be the best point right there. So we're going to pick the moment about that point, so the sum of the moments about that point add up to zero. All right, so what are all the moments about the point? Now the reason why I picked that point, because there's two forces emanating from that. There's a tension in the x-direction, tension in the y-direction, so I can eliminate that. Um, let's see here. Would that be a good idea? Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'll take the... Yeah, force. I'll go ahead and do that because with the angles and all that, it'll make it a little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and get rid of t sub y and t sub x. And so what do we have here? We have f sub a in a clockwise direction at a distance of 6 inches away, so it would be minus f sub a times 6 inches. All right, so now we have the 100 pounds, which causes a counterclockwise direction, so plus 100. And the distance from there to there, well, let's see here. This is 4 inches from the side. This is 6 inches, so that has to be 2 inches right there, so times 2 inches. We have 100 pounds acting this way, which is a clockwise direction. That's minus 100 multiplied times this distance. Now remember that uh, from there to there is 12 inches. This was 2 inches, so that must be 10 inches. And finally we have F sub C. That would be a counterclockwise direction. That's plus F sub C. And the distance from there to there, notice this is 3 inches. That's 10 inches. That must be 7 inches. So F sub C times 7 inches. All right, and that all has to add up to zero as well. So now I have three equations and three unknowns. The three unknowns are T, F sub C, and F sub A. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and replace F sub A in this equation by F sub C. I'm going to solve this equation for F sub C. So I can say that F sub C is equal to Moving this to the other side, that would be positive 6 times F sub A minus 200 plus 1,000, that would be plus 800, because when I move this across, it becomes minus. When I move that across, it becomes plus, so it becomes a plus 800. And then I divide both sides by 7, so divide this by 7, and that gives me F sub C in terms of F sub A. Working this out a little bit, I can say that F sub C is equal to 6 divided by 7, so 6 divided by 7, and that would be equal to 0 0.857. So 0 0.857 F sub A plus 800 divided by 7 equals 114 plus 114. So now I have an expression that tells me what F sub C, F sub C is in terms of F sub A, and I can go ahead and replace F sub, a, F sub C in this equation. All right, so taking my first equation and my second equation and eliminating F sub C in the first equation. So my first equation now becomes as follows. I can now say that 0 is equal to 0 0.979t, 0 0.979t, minus F sub C, and F sub C can be written as minus... 0 0.857 F sub A plus 114. Oh, that must be a minus as well, right? Because I'm subtracting. I'm subtracting F sub C, so I'm subtracting both of these, so minus 114. The second equation becomes 0 is equal to, second equation, 0 equals to minus 200, minus 200, minus 0 0.2. 2,1 t and plus f sub a. All right, 
I'm getting closer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve this equation right here for f sub a in terms of t, and then plug that into my f sub a there. So this equation, I can say that f sub a is equal to, moving this across, a positive 0 0.210 t and a positive 200. And I'm going to take this and substitute that into my first equation right there. So finally, my equation now becomes 0 is equal to 0 0.979 t minus 0 0.857 times f sub a, and f sub a is equal to 0 0.210 t plus 200. All right, simplifying this equation, combining those two, I get 0.857 times 0.21, that's negative, add that to 9, whoop, take it back, 0.979 equals. So I get 0.799t minus 200 times 0.857 equals minus 171.4. So finally, I can say t is equal to 171.4 divided by 0 0.799. So divide by 0.799 equals, so t, the tension, is equal to 214.5, and the units here would be pounds. So finally, we found the tension in this problem in pounds. So now I can go ahead and find F sub A, now that I've found the tension. So F sub A is equal to 0 0.210 times the tension, which is 214.5 pounds, plus 200 pounds. So now I know that F sub A is equal to, so times 0.21, and add that to 200, so 245 pounds. So F sub A equals 245 pounds. And finally, now we can go and calculate F sub C. So F sub C is down here. So we go F sub C is equal to 0 0.857 F sub A plus 114 pounds. So, multiplying this times 0.857 and adding that to 114 plus 114, and we get 324 pounds, 324 pounds. So, F sub C is equal to 324 pounds. Wow, again, it's not a short problem, but if you follow the principles, the sum of the force in the x direction, the sum of the force in the y direction, and then sometimes if there's a third unknown, you'll have to find the sum of the moments about some point, doesn't matter which point you pick, I picked this point B right there. But that's how you find the tension, the force at A, and the force at C. Now, take a quick look and see. The force at A is 245 pounds, which is kind of interesting because you have 200 pounds pushing this way, you have this cable pulling in this direction, so the full force of the two forces plus the Y component right here pushes down, compensated for by F sub A, and then we have F sub C, it's the cable pulling in this direction, F sub C has to hold back 324 pounds to keep things in place. And that's how we do that problem.